Yes, we're going to be talking today about a topic that's really a serious health concern, high cholesterol. Dr. Abba, I'd like to start with you. What is high cholesterol? Cholesterol is a substance that runs through your bloodstream and is defined as elevated or high when it's the total number is above 190 or 200 total. So that is defined as high cholesterol. But currently in the United States, one-third of the adult population has high cholesterol. Anywhere from 1 to 250 to 1 in 5 have a genetic form that cannot be treated with diet and exercise alone. Is this when doctors tell us that we'll need to go on a cholesterol medication to lower it and to have, you know, better health results? Yeah, so we have several medications and oftentimes we need uh, more than one to get our cholesterol to the target goal. But unfortunately, currently in this country, only a little over a half of all people that could benefit from these treatments are actually on them. Okay, I'm going to switch to Catherine. Catherine, I'm understanding you're relatively young and you've had a, you had a heart attack even at a younger age. Could you give me a synopsis of that? Sure. Well, I found out that I had high cholesterol when I was 15 years old. It was very high, above 300 milligrams per deciliter, and, but I wasn't given a diagnosis and I really didn't understand how important it was for me to lower it. So fast forward to the age of 39 and I was experiencing shortness of breath. And one day I started having crushing chest pain and I called 911 and I had, in fact, 100% blockage of the main artery that supplies my um, heart blood. And so what I found out afterwards is that I do have a genetic condition, familial hypercholesterolemia or FH is a lot easier to say. And about one in 250 people have this condition. Um, and what would give people an idea that they might be impacted is if they have a family history of early heart disease as well, or they've always been told by their doctor that they have high cholesterol. Thank you for sharing our story, and I'm so excited you're here to tell us about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> doctor, um, is her story just routine? Because she said she knew when she was 15, but she didn't have an episode until she was 39. Yeah, well, we're very lucky that Catherine knew. Unfortunately, um, many individuals don't. And so I think it, her story is a little unique in the sense that many people don't even know that they have this risk factor and are walking out there, you know. So I think that that's one piece of it. The other piece of it is, unfortunately, despite the fact that we've been doing a lot of work in this country on reducing our heart events, uh, the rates of heart attack and stroke, specifically heart attacks in young women, are actually still on the rise, and, and that's pretty alarming. Well, and if I may, if I may just guess. add, thank you, if I just may add, too, that women are less likely to be treated um, effectively or seriously when they come in and they show symptoms of cardiovascular disease. I mean, the data show that we're less likely to be put on medications we're less likely to have the proper treatment after we have a heart attack. So I think there are a couple things going on. There are. Doctor, is it because, you know, there's just some statistics that show women don't have heart attacks as frequently or something that we aren't taking as seriously? Um, no, I, I think the healthcare community takes it very seriously. Uh, I think we still have a lot of work to do on educating the public. Uh, I think that, you know, the American Heart Association has worked hard on trying to do that, but still only two-thirds of women know that heart disease is their number one cause of death in this country. So I think that um, we're taking it seriously, but I think we still have work to do in educating the public on how to advocate for themselves and seek care appropriately. Okay, and that's why we're having this conversation. Uh, I've got to get this last question in from social media. They say that you said that um, uh, cholesterol can be hereditary. So what, is there anything that we can do to lower it? Yeah, there, we have a lot of new, safe, and effective treatments. Statins are the cornerstone of treatment, which lower, lower cholesterol, but also lower the risk of having a future heart attack or cardiovascular death. And the side effect profile 
is quite low in our current studies. And then we have a newer class of medicines called PCSK9 inhibitors, and they can lower the LDL cholesterol to 30 to 40 milligrams per deciliter. And we know that those individuals who are on that medicine longer tend to have a lower risk of heart attack, stroke, and death. So there are a whole host of ways to treat high cholesterol. Dr. Abba and Catherine, I want to thank you so much for this important information. Dr. Abba, where do we go and find out more information? Because I've got more questions than you have time. <laughs> well, I'm going to direct that to Catherine, actually. Well, you, your listeners can go to morefamiliesmorehearts.org, and we are happy to help people navigate the health system and understand why and if they have high cholesterol and what they can do about it. I want to thank you both of you ladies for changing uh, some lives this, today. I'm sure someone can use this information. Have a great weekend. Thank you for having us. You too. Most fascinating authors, all because I love a good book. This summer, I partnered with WPS for BB Summer Book Giveaway. We're giving away New York Times bestsellers and award-winning books. Books that inspire me, and I'm sure they'll inspire you. To be eligible to win a copy of Jesus Can Give You a New Life, answer this question. What is God's greatest gift to mankind? You'll find the answer in John 3.16 of the Bible. Send your response to the email at the bottom of the screen. I'm Valder Beebe, and I'll see you for the next BB Summer Book Giveaway.